restricted uses. I asked you early to think about making sure a municipality is involved by giving a letter of support. The next step for the municipality is to be represented on your group and the reason for that is that they know the regulations generally that they have for buildings and any work you plan to do. If your plans are dreaming and they're against bylaws or requirements of a municipal unit, they're not going to be accepted. You still need to follow the regulations. So keep in mind that that representative may be a great resource in your planning to ensure that you don't put things in the plan that are unmanageable or unachievable based upon bylaws of a community. There may be uh, regulations in place for signage. There may be regulations in place for many things to do with buildings and you need to be aware of that. So it's probably useful to include a municipal offer uh, for a, a municipal representative to be on your group. We're continuing in the the plan that you have in front of you with the marketing strategy. That's my area, that's something I really enjoy. But we don't always have experts in our communities, do we? Well, yes we do. The people that operate tourism businesses are experts in marketing, we hope. Tourist associations, tourist organizations provincially, regionally and locally are great resources because if lighthouses are tourist locations in the new realm, not uh, protectors of people at sea, but more tourist locations, then they are the experts that can market it. We're giving them, we're helping them by doing some work with our lighthouses to keep our lighthouses available, however much. They really should be thankful for that and hopefully participate in the plan. They may be involved in your organization too, if they're not too busy, but someone from a tourist business or a tourist organization may help you by being involved in your committee and they also have the knowledge and expertise often to help with marketing. But when you go forward with marketing, remember the way you're presenting it, and this is not against John, but it might be against the evaluators, they don't know your community. Be aware of that. They do not know your community. In fact, they probably don't even know the population of it because you're not asked to put that down. Or the economic situation. In this section, you start by talking about your community. A community could be a town or could be a whole county. A community could be a village. A co community could be a series of houses in a location that is part of a municipal unit. They don't know that. So to put it in perspective for the evaluators, it's important to tell them who you are and what your economic situation is. I think they will appreciate if you say it's very difficult to find funding because we're a community, as I heard last night, of 15 people. Well, it's going to be awfully hard to put a, a massive plan together that identifies a lot of resources and people when you're a community of 15 people. Am I right? So give them a perspective on your community in this one that we are from a community of 5,000 people. Those 5,000 people primarily, primarily live on the sea because of fishing or on the farm because of farming, wherever it is. Normally it's more the fishing than the farming as we know, but at the same time your community may have a major industry that employs most of the community. That's the sort of thing that gives them a perspective when they're looking at your plans. So it's important to tell them they're in Ottawa, they're in Moncton, wherever they are, they're in Halifax, they may not know your community as well as you do. So tell them what your community is that you're representing. I think it's important to let them know that. Once you've done that, your marketing is very key. But the marketing starts before you're even an organization. I think what you need to do, a hint that I would give, is that you have an open house or a community, a kitchen gathering, whatever it might be 
in your area and do it in a public way. Promote it as much as you can. Promotion can be through municipal councils if they're televised, through newspapers, through whatever you can, through the bulletin board at the, at the shopping center or the bulletin board at the store, something like that to let people know and non-threatening, some sort of invitation to come and let's talk about our lighthouse. It's theirs as much as it is yours and to talk about our lighthouse. Do it in a way where it's someone just writes down all the thoughts and ideas because that will help you do two things. It will help you put the long-term plan together and it'll help you to find people who will buy in and participate. If they realize that that asset that is sitting out there they visit quite often is very important to their community, they're going to want to be involved. So invite people in to participate with you. Don't hide it from them. Make sure that they're aware of what your thoughts are and then you go ahead and add their comments to it because once they see that they're, they're listened to, they may become involved or they may support or they may identify someone who can be on the committee who they're aware of that has the resources or the skills that you need. So make sure that you promote and market to your community first. Following that, Participate with um, a tourism group or some sort of tourism initiative so that the people that refer visitors to your lighthouse, because we all want to say, stay a little longer, why don't you go to the lighthouse? Might be a great walk, spend the afternoon there. Those are the people that can really support us by, by telling us what those customers want what those visitors are looking for. That can be a great resource to identify for your plan. So that should be done fairly early too. Once you have that, then, then it helps you to put your plan together in a ver very reasonable way. Marketing after will happen. The marketing plan is we want to know what the asset is, what the possible options are to do with it and then it is our intention to market this to anyone who wishes and would enjoy the activities we're offering. That's the sentence that you end that section with. It is our intention. You can't say how many dollars you're going to spend, you have no idea. You're involving the partners up front by having tourism organizations, tourism uh, operators, your community citizens involved, they're the best marketers we'll ever have because they're the ones that will refer or bring people to the site. So at the end we intend to market this facility or this site um, through all means possible once it is established but you don't tell them how you intend to spend 5,000 on radio and 2,000 here and blank blank here. That evolves, that evolves as your group evolves, as your activities are desired, as the operators say, boy, wouldn't it be nice to have a little card with a little map on it, a hand-drawn map to say how to get to the site. And that it's a walking path, not a driving path, that sort of thing. Something as simple as that can be great, a great resource for a tourism group. It allows them to say, stay longer. Let them do your marketing for you, but you intend to follow that. That's what you say at the end of this section. You can't do much more than that for the future. It's now. Don't refer to this, but you have the sheet. I tried to do it in a, le uh, a letter form up and down so you'd be able to read a few of those, a few of the things in it. A financial statement, projected financial statement, comes from an expectation of the expenses and the revenues to cover it. Well, it just lists some of the suggestions on what are the expenses. Hopefully if a municipal unit is involved there will be no taxes. They can't exempt automatically a charitable group or a nonprofit group. It's not automatically exemption. Under the new Municipal Government Act of Nova Scotia, there has to be a decision of the council to accept 
that taxes are not due on sites. They have to make a serious decision. It's not automatic. It used to be automatic, but the new Municipal Government Act requires that a, a, a motion be made in council to exempt anything from, from taxation, property taxes that is. Okay? Be aware of that. Heating, cooling, electricity, um, so many of those areas. Landscaping. Um, there are a lot of expenses but you may have volunteers that provide that. So all of those kinds of expenses, you look for someone who may be able to support that. Whether it be landscaping, you, don't, you do not own your own lawn mower, but you may have someone who's willing to do the lawn mowing. Well, maybe someone has a unit they can loan you to use to do your lawn mowing. Maybe they'll fill it before you start. That would be always a great idea. Keep the value of all of those loans, all of those grants, all of those donations of time or talent, keep a record of them. It's extremely important. John and I talked and we're not sure exactly, but if, there, if you put down the total expenses that you'd have to pay out to someone to do all of those things, that's the cost of operating your lighthouse or your prop, the property. If you have some of them donated, they may accept the value of the labor, reasonable amount, and the cost of materials to do that. Instead of paying for a rental of a lawnmower or a company to do the lawn mowing, if you have a loan of the lawn mower and the gas in it, and you have a volunteer to do it, put that down as a value. Keep a record of that. Very important to do. It may impact on that final decision because they'll realize if you think your costs are 5000 maybe they'd be 10 if you had no one doing that work. They need to realize what the real cost is, and you as a community need to realize how much you'll need to subsidize when you look at the possible revenue streams. Okay? When, as soon as your organization is in place, make sure that you apply to a municipal unit for some of their grant programs. They all have grant programs. Do it at that time. Don't wait until you're in operation, until you've taken over the site. As a group, you can provide a service in the community and the municipality can support that. The reason I'm saying that is that later on, when you become more organized and in fact own the facility or manage the facility, it'll be easier to go back to them because they've set a precedent by giving a small amount of a grant to allow you to work forward. And possibly that grant is what you can match to get your business plan done, a serious business plan if that's what you need. If you need a plan that may cost $500, they may be able to give you a quarter of that or, a thousand, or $200 of it to get that plan done. There are government programs to help write plans. There are government programs. Right now, a program that has ended, but within the next month, they expect, ACOA expects to sign it off to the Community Business Development Corporations. Do you know who they are? Do you? I'll refer in a second. I've got their website here. The Community Business Development Corporations are organizations that provide financial assistance or consulting assistance to small businesses. They now can work with nonprofit organizations too and provide funding or support. The program I'm referring to is called the Com Consulting Assistance Services. ACOA used to provide 75 percent of the cost for a business plan to be done by a professional. They're transferring that program to the, these corporations. You all have one in your area somewhere. There are 13 of them in Nova Scotia throughout the province. 